Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, just a quick thread I want to jump on board actually. Uh, Richard McCook put up a thread and I've seen a few people do some responses to it and just seemed kind of fun and thought I would jump on board so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'll make sure to put a link down below so you can go check out uh, Rich's channel where he or his video where he did the thread. So. Uh, 10 quick questions and the thing that made it look kind of fun was the fact that it's not about showing vinyl or talking about music But more so about our video making here in the VC So a nice little change of pace as far as subjects go But uh, yeah, let's just kind of jump right into it question number one What's more important to you views or subscribers? I've never really cared about either but if I had to choose between the two I would say views um you know, I make videos, and the, the thing that I hope most cases to get out of making videos is to introduce some something to someone that they've never heard before, and for someone to potentially give something back to me based on what I'm talking about that I've never heard or didn't know or whatever. Uh, that back and forth and sharing in the VC is what makes the whole thing magical to me. So I, I care a lot more about people viewing videos and interacting than I care about if I have, you know, 180,000 subs and only 5,000 of them are actually VC members. It's like, okay, that, who cares? For, for, for me personally, if people want to go for that, no problem. But since I'm not into the monetizing thing and all of that, it's just not something I've ever really cared about. Um, do you have an optimum length for your videos? Not really. Um, I've, I've noticed that my videos tend to naturally fall around 12 to 18 minutes like for the most part that always captures everything that I want to say or do in a video but no I don't have uh, any length of time I just kind of hit record and blah 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 and then when it's done I hit stop <laughs> so that's about it I do notice that I'll feel kind of funny about a video if it starts getting towards that 28 29 minute mark crossing over 30 that always feels off to me for some reason unless it's something that warrants it with you know a ton of questions or whatever but uh, moving right along question number three uh, is it a chore making videos or are you addicted to it and do you still get nervous is it a chore not really the only thing that has ever seemed maybe like a chore is when you start getting into like trying to get lighting right and all of that and turning on like every light in the house and it feels like the sun is in your house but your camera is still not capturing it it seems dark like that used to frustrate me when I had to deal with that but in terms of sitting down in front of the camera making videos talking about stuff uploading it and this and that no that's that's kind of the joy part are you addicted I would say maybe the first six years or so I was making videos probably but really now no, I don't think I'm addicted at all because I'm very comfortable with I make a video and I, and I don't make a video for four weeks and then like this week, you know, two days, I think I've made this my third video in two days and then if I get a little burnout taking a few months off and coming back, like I'm comfortable with all of that so I think that keeps me from being like addicted uh, and the last part of that question, do you still get nervous? No, I don't think so and I think a big part of this because I don't really rehearse my videos and stuff like that. I just simply grab the things I want to talk about and I just hit click and hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly, blah 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 blah. Talk to you soon. And that's just kind of that. And so I, I just like to just shoot right from the hip and just say whatever comes to mind and, and just talk to people that want to actually watch my videos. Which is also why you always see me making mistakes and everything and I don't go back and edit it or anything. It's just kind of, that's what you get. We're being real here and if I said something totally wrong, most cases you know, oh, he didn't mean to say that, and blah, blah, blah. So no, I think that keeps me from getting nervous because I'm just allowed to kind of be myself. Uh, question number four, how do you react to bad or negative comments on your videos? Don't really phase me that much. I actually love constructive criticism. I think that's great. And to me, constructive criticism truly shows a love and caring. So I always appreciate that. People that just want to, like, you know, and it's so easy to tell between that type of constructive criticism and a troll or someone that just really wants to get a rise out of you or get some satisfaction by unleashing on other people. 
which is kind of kind of bad but there's a, a lot of that in this world right now so usually if, if I get a trolling type of comment it's usually something just on the lines of I'll reply you know that's just kind of sad you know I'm just that just the something that makes you have the need to feel like you need to come do that or you need to say that or th that's of that much importance to you I'm I'm sorry I, just, I think it's kind of sad but you know feel free not to not to watch any for any further or unsubscribe or whatever the case may be that's kind of my my attitude towards it and, and I, th I think it's it's something that's a I'm not gonna say easy for me but I, I definitely have gotten a, a pattern or a, a feel for how to deal with that because it's kind of something I've dealt with my entire life not to get far off here but it, it definitely plays in this question because I've always been very different you know as it, when people normally see a six foot five bald black guy you know that they don't know anything about there's a ton of assumptions that are already made and I'm the weirdo freak that crushes all those assumptions <laughs> you know whether it's about the music I listen to, my political views, just all kinds of things. It's almost never what people expect. Like it just, it doesn't fit this shell for them. So I've always gotten used to people just kind of having weird reactions towards me or even kind of negative reactions because I'm not satisfying a thought process that they have. So what I've kind of grown to do and maybe even think about this, I'm kind of sharing this in case there's somebody that maybe kind of deals with the same thing is I've actually learned where it makes me feel good sometimes when that happens from the standpoint that oh they must really be seeing me right because I'm not fitting into their nice box which means I must be authentic they must really be seeing this so I'm comfortable with that I'm very comfortable with you not liking me as long as you're not liking me for who I really am that's that's kind of the key and I would much rather have that than someone liking me, thinking I'm something that I'm not. Like, I actually want to tap that person on the shoulder. Like, no, 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 no. Let me tell you who I really am, so you can, you know, in case you don't like it. Okay, now I feel more comfortable because at least you truly know who I am. <laughs> so, that's kind of how that question fits in fits in there for me. Um, okay, so question number five: Do you ever buy records uh, just to show on your channel? Heck no. I can't afford to buy the records that I really want, much less going out and buying records just to show on my channel. So that's a that's a heck no. Um, but no, I've always had that very hard, fast rule about my collection. I don't buy anything and bring anything into my collection that I don't, excuse me, actually love. Uh, you know, there has to be something on that album that I just I really dig I want it I know I'm gonna want to hear again that stirred something inside of me it's everything I get is because I actually love it and the other rule is it does not go on the shelf until I've actually listened to the entire album so I don't buy anything and just throw it on the shelf and you know that type of thing so so yeah I, I don't buy anything just to show on my channel because uh, it goes back to that last question. I wouldn't feel authentic if I was doing that. If I'm going to show something, I'm only going to show it because I want you guys to see me. And that's only going to be with, you know, things that I love. Um, so, next question is... We're on number six. Yeah. Uh, how would you like to improve your channel? I think the biggest thing is kind of what I tried to do this past week, which was get a slightly better camera and microphone. Uh, I've been wanting to do that for quite some time and just kind of put it off and, you know, got a nice little push this past week with some very good constructive criticism, <laughs> going right back to that, that really kind of motivated me to do something positive. So uh, that, that'd be the thing that I would say I, I say I wanted to do to improve my channel, I guess on a small scale I have. Uh, question number seven. What are your thoughts on live streams? I think they're great. I think it's one of the positive things that's come from this whole COVID thing. Um, I do love doing live streams more so than watching live streams, but even that is still watching live streams are great. Doing live streams are really great and really fun. And uh, 
you know, I, I don't do as much, but actually, let's just say, if anybody wants to do a live stream about something, and you want Mr. Hall of Fame to come on board, please reach out, because I would love to do many more of those, because they are so much fun. Um, but yeah, I just, I like the, the real time, you know, interaction with the live stream. Because when you really get down to it, with everything that we do, the, the core to it, the core to who we are here in the VC, it's our freaking passion. You know, it's our passion for the music that we love and what it brings out in us. So to be able to share that real time and, you know, with voice inflection and everything else, that's just so far beyond comment, response three days later, comment, you know. So the live streams are awesome. Uh, question number eight. What is your most viewed video and are you surprised? I looked right before I did this video and my most viewed video was one that I did about... 19 years ago and it's entitled um, what vinyl collectors should know I think it's how, it's how it's it's titled so I'm not surprised that it's my most viewed just because of the title I think that alone is probably the, the reason but it was a video just talking about the insurance policy that State Farm offered to cover your vinyl records so that, that's all it was but, but yeah, that's my most viewed video. I was assuming it would be one of my room tours. And actually the second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth place of most viewed were my room tours. So, so yeah, but again, with that title, not really that surprised. Um, question number nine. Have you ever made a video where you have not been wearing trousers? Well, first of all, I don't own any trousers. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that. Um, no, I've never, I don't think I've ever done a video where I wasn't wearing pants or something like that. It wouldn't surprise me if I did, but I don't think I have. Maybe I'll have to do one in the future and then you'll have to just guess which one it is after I tell you. The last 10 videos, one of them I didn't have any pants on. Um, but question number 10, the last question here, how long do you intend on making videos um, pretty much as long as I'm still here and can do it you know I was thinking about that question right before I hit record and you know I, I've been making videos now for over 12 years at this point uh, and when you really really think about it you know when I first started collecting vinyl I've told the story before now I got really excited about it and I started buying a bunch of stuff back when everything was so cheap and uh, <laughs> where I like every grill I have today, I got for four dollars back then. <laughs> but uh, I started going to YouTube looking for videos of just other people talking about vinyl, and nobody was like Sean was one guy that had already been doing some videos, but there was no one. And then a guy named Dan in Canada kind of jumped on board doing some videos, and um, a guy named Wessa Pamati. And uh, LJ came in not too, you know, further down the road. So for a while, it's just like this little bitty group of 20 of us or so that were talking about vinyl that spawned into this thing that became the vinyl community. So when I really think about that, it's like I've been making videos since before the vinyl community over a decade ago. I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. So I'll probably be doing videos for for quite some time, especially having that feeling of. I can take a break when I want. I don't have to make a certain number of videos and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, until music goes out of style, I'll be around. And that ain't happening anytime soon. So, uh, yeah. But again, Richard, great 10 questions. That was really fun, you know, doing something just kind of not showing vinyl related. Uh, but yeah, go to his channel, check it out, do your response. And as always, we will talk to you soon, VC. All right, take care, guys.